Welcome everyone to this Privacy Espresso. And today I'm joined by Haim Ravia, partner from the law firm Percoin based in Israel, because we're going to discuss about the possibility of new amendments in the Israeli privacy protection law. So thanks a lot, Haim, for being with us, first of all. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure being with you. So let's move step by step. I think that the best way to start this brief discussion would be to go through the actual um, framework in Israel. So if you can just give us overview. So currently the privacy protection regime, regime in Israel is like a multi-layered cake. At the top there's the basic law, human dignity and uh, liberty that states that all persons have the right to privacy and uh, intimacy. Now basic laws in Israel are the building blocks of the future constitution. So actually, privacy is a constitutional right under Israeli law. Under the law, there's the privacy protection law, which actually preceded the basic law. It dates back to 1981. Israel was one of the first states worldwide, if not the first, to enact such a law. And uh, it was groundbreaking for the time, but it is currently outdated. Uh, it offers a regime of protecting both what we would call the classical privacy. And then there are chapters covering issues of uh, data processing. Under the law, there are obviously regulations. Now, regulations in Israeli law are uh, of less importance than a law, unlike maybe in the EU. There are two uh, main regulations I would like to refer to. One is dealing with uh, data security. These are relative, relatively new. They date back to 2018. They are uh, very elaborate, uh, much more uh, detailed than the say GDPR article dealing with uh, data security. And they uh, apply to businesses that own, manage, or have access to databases in Israel. Uh, and they have like uh, uh, four categories of data protection that differ by the means each category requires the data owner to take, uh, ranging from databases owned by individuals to databases of the highest data security requirements. And then there are regulations causing a cross-border transfer of uh, data. There are also sp sector-specific laws uh, detailing privacy issues. And then there are various regulators. The most prominent is uh, the uh, Privacy Protection Authority that issues guidelines ranging from um, email addresses as personal data to appointment of uh, DPOs under Israeli law, even though it is not a requirement. Thank you very much. I can understand that there is a pretty complex uh, framework with various laws and, and regulations. Uh, in this regard, I understand that the government introduced some uh, extensive amendments to, to the privacy protection law. So what, what, what it is about? So indeed, the government introduced a bill to amend the law, and it already passed the first reading in the Israeli Knesset, the, that's the Israeli parliament, the first of three. Now it's being uh, um, prepared and uh, drafted at the Constitutional uh, Committee of the Israeli parliament. This uh, amendment is the first of uh, two aiming to modernize the antiquated 1981 law by expanding the scope of the law and downscaling the obligation to register a database, which is quite unique to uh, Israel. There are two significant or three significant far-reaching amendments. One is aiming to modernize definitions. The other is empowering the privacy protection authorities to have you know, more, uh, I would say, string um, enforcement regulations. Uh, and there's also a part, as I mentioned, downscaling or minimizing the obligation to register a database. And, and one additional amendment that seeks to uh, modernize, I would say, the purpose limitation provisions applying to database. Now, as for the definitions, I would mention that the uh, definition of personal information uh, would be 
almost identical to the one used by the GDPR. Uh, there is a new category of especially sensitive information, which is much broader than the uh, um, GDPR specific, special categories of uh, data. Uh, it will cover uh, also concepts that are already familiar to those of you uh, dealing with GDPR. It does um, encompass also information about financial assets and consumption, which when you come to think of it, most economy is driven by such uh, uh, information. So that may render all such personal data uh, as especially as sensitive. Uh, as far as the uh, lawful management of information and limitation of use, uh, the bill does not only forbid database owner and holders to use information for different purposes other than the ones they were originally collected for, but also extends this prohibition to knowledge about an individual's private affairs and goes as far as to prohibit owners and holders from allowing others to use it for different purposes. It further prohibits anyone from using or holding such information or knowledge without the permission of the database owner, which is very far reaching. And I assume that it will be hotly debated in the Israeli uh, parliament. And finally, there are enforcement measures that uh, the Privacy Protection Authority is uh, you know, keen to have. I should say we, that we are going through a political crisis these days. And so it's, it's not clear if the government will be able to finalize the legislation of these amendments. This is the third attempt. We should have to wait and see if it succeeds. Yes, I mean, uh, of course, it's something very sensitive. Uh, so uh, probably it's difficult to, to touch and decide on those kind of topics if the situation is difficult to manage also under the political perspective. So just one last question for, for you that is about which are the current main issues that companies are, are facing there. And maybe you think that those amendments may help Quite frankly, no, I don't think that they will help. Companies are struggling with two main issues. One is the old provisions of the current law. The prominent export market of Israel is the European Union. Many Israeli companies and organizations try to comply with GDPR, which actually embeds any and all requirements of Israeli law except for the outdated uh, requirement to register a database. So if you're compliant with GDPR, then you are uh, in effect compliant with the Israeli privacy protection law. But when you come to think of that, this is really unusual. Companies in Israel uh, look upon and consider European laws. Uh, we had a conference uh, covering four years to GDPR, and we had 250 participants, which is really unbelievable when you consider this is not an Israeli law. So this is the first thing. It is unclear how to obey with provisions drafted back in 1981, when there was no internet, no cellular data, no location-based services, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the second thing is the adequacy issue. Back in 2011, Israel was uh, deemed to have an adequate protection of personal data, the adequacy decision is still effective, but it's being re-examined for the last four years. We anticipated a decision uh, back in 2020, but then due to COVID, it, it was delayed, and we are still waiting for that to occur. If adequacy will be denied, then the main market export market of Israel will have to be dealt in, in a much more inconvenient way. The free transfer of data will be blocked and we will have to resort to uh, standard contractual clauses, bilateral arrangements, etc., etc. So we are waiting for that to happen, uh, wishing that the adequacy will not be denied, but who knows? Thanks a lot again, Aim. That that was uh, insightful. The perspective of you know respecting a, a law coming from uh, from other countries uh, it's extremely interesting. Hopefully, this will help your companies to be already compliant in case of not uh, adequacy uh, decision, of course. But I understand that this can be really cumbersome. So thank you very much for being with us today for this overview on what's happening in Israel. I thank our listeners for being with us today, and I would like to invite them not only to the next Privacy Espresso but also to the Privsec event 
event that we will have at the end of June, where Ahim will also participate together with some of his colleagues. So looking forward to meet you all also there. Thanks a lot, Ahim, again. Thank you. Bye-bye.